Imagine you're browsing a website, like an online grocery store where you can see different product pages. But have you ever wondered how those pages are created? Websites use templates to create those pages. Think of templates as blueprints or frameworks that define how a page should look. They have placeholders that get filled with information to create the final page you see. Most website uses Twig, Jinja2, Mustache, Mako, Velocity, EJS, Handlebars and many others as in template engines. Websites utilize template engines in their backend systems to dynamically generate content and personalize user experiences. As part of this process, users provide input such as their name or search queries, which is essential for tailoring the website's output to their needs. However, if a website fails to properly handle user input, it can be vulnerable to server-side template injection. In such cases, an attacker can exploit this vulnerability by injecting their own code into the website's templates. Let's take a look on how we can exploit the server-side template injection. Exploiting SSTI can be a two-step process. First, we need to identify the presence of SSTI vulnerability. Second, we craft our payload to execute arbitrary code. Let's see it in action. Now to confirm that input field is vulnerable, we can fuzz the input field using a polyglot consisting of characters such as dollar, curly braces, single quote, double quote, percent symbol, etc. It will trigger an error that discloses information about the template engine. Here we have a grocery mart website that uses Jinja2 as a template engine. If an attacker crafts malicious input like 9 asterisk 9 enclosed within double curly braces, it would be evaluated as code and executed by the template engine, resulting in no result found for 81, being displayed on the page. In Python, every object belongs to a class, which determines its behavior and defines what operations can be performed on it. The class attribute is a special attribute that allows you to access the class of an object. Here we are accessing object of class by using class attribute. In this case it is returning a class of object list and alternatively we can also call string object using class attribute on it. Here we are passing list object and accessing subclasses using the MRO of the list object in Python. Then we use the subprocess modules popen method by specifying index number from the list which is 416. With the help of popen function in Python, we can now directly execute various commands by utilizing its indexing capabilities. The risks of SSTI can be serious. When attackers inject malicious code, they can do harmful things, such as accessing sensitive data like passwords or credit card details, modifying website content, running an arbitrary command or even taking control of the entire system. The impact of SSTI can be significant. Here are a few consequences that can arise from an SSTI vulnerability. Remote code execution where attackers can execute arbitrary code on the server, gaining control over the entire application or even the underlying operating system. SSTI can expose sensitive data stored on the server, such as database credentials, API keys, or customer information. This can lead to data breaches and compromise user privacy. An attacker can exploit SSTI to overload the server's resources, causing it to crash or become unresponsive, resulting in service disruptions. Now that we understand the risks, let's talk about prevention and mitigation strategies. Websites should thoroughly check and validate user input to ensure it's safe and doesn't contain any unexpected or harmful code. Additionally, consider using a context-specific output encoding mechanism to prevent code injection through user input. Configure your template engine to prevent access to sensitive objects and functions. Many web frameworks have sandboxing features to protect against SSTI vulnerabilities. Be sure to follow best practices for your specific framework. Server-side template injection vulnerabilities have been exploited in various real-world attacks. Let's examine a few notable examples. In April 2016, a security researcher named Orange Tsai reported a remote code execution vulnerability in Uber's website. The vulnerability was caused by a failure to properly sanitize user input when rendering templates, using the Flask Jinja 2 template engine. This allowed an attacker to inject arbitrary Python code into the templates and perform malicious activities. Thank you for joining us today. 
We hope you found this video insightful and informative. At Security Boat, we are dedicated to providing comprehensive security solutions and services. From vulnerability assessments and penetration testing to security consulting, we have you covered. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos where we'll delve deeper into a wide range of information security topics and share valuable insights to help you safeguard your digital assets. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to explore the Security Boat Workbook for additional resources and consider leveraging our professional services to ensure your organization's security. Until next time.